So this is just a continuation um, of the exponential growth problems that we were working on. And problems 9 and 10 are on the screen. Or again, we're going to use the formula P of T, P, P being the future amount after T units of time, equals the starting number times E to the R, which is the growth rate as a decimal, and to the R times T power, where T is the time. If we were working at your problem 9, it talks about the number of daily visitors to a new website is currently 10 million people. That's going to be the starting number. So my P sub 0, if I'm doing number 9, is going to be 10, which represents 10 million people. I'm not going to use the word million to the very end. I'll put it back on. So the number of visitors to a new website is currently 10 million people per day. So the T is probably going to be time and days. The number is growing at a rate of 0.5% per day. So this 0.5% per day, I'm going to make that into a decimal by dragging the decimal over twice. I'm going to get 0 0.005 as a decimal maybe write a zero to the left of the decimal. So the number is growing at a rate of 0.5% per day. How many people will visit the website in 30 days? T stands for the number of days. And then rel relative to the formula P of T, the P in this case stands for the number of people visiting a website. T stands for the number of days equals the starting amount times E to the RT power. If you were working this, you'd do P of 10 no, yeah, P of 30, the number of people that will go to the website in 30 days is the initial number 10, which stands for 10 million, times E to the R, which is 0 0.005 times T, which is 30. You'd enter that in your calculator. We'll round to the nearest integer. I'll go ahead and do number 10, show you how the rounding is going to work. M mine is for Amazon. I don't know how realistic my numbers are. I'm sure I just made these up because I was feeling lazy and I just wanted something that sounded good. But it says the number of daily visitors to Amazon is 100 million. That's going to be my P sub 0. My P sub 0 is going to be 100 million. I'm just going to write the number 100 and, and then tack the word million onto my answer. The number is growing at a rate of 0.25% per day, which is a huge growth rate, probably unrealistically big for an established company. I'm going to change that to a decimal by moving the decimal over twice and get 0 0.0025 and throw a zero to the left of that. How many people will visit the Amazon in 30 days? T is going to be 30. My formula is going to be P, which stands for the number of people going to Amazon of 30 after 30 days is the starting 100 million people which is like a third of the United States, um, times e to the 0 0.0025 times 30. So I'm going to get, for my calculator, the right-hand side, 100 million people, shift in ln for the e, 0 0.0025 times 30. And my calculator is going to give me 107.788 million people. I don't really care how many decimals I write. I'm rounding to the nearest integer. It's either going to stay at 107, which would be 107 million, or that 7 is going to round up. And that has to be based on the number after the decimal place. If the number after the decimal is 5 or bigger, I'm going to round up. So I'm going to round that up. And I'm just going to write an answer of 108 million people per day about. We'll visit Amazon daily in 30 days. Again, I don't know that those numbers are very realistic, but they kind of are what they are. Um, I made up an extra problem. It's kind of morbid, but this is the best table I could come up with um, since we're doing this in the middle of um, COVID-19 or coronavirus. And um, cor the coronavirus is spreading exponentially. If you've watched the news or are you know, listen to anything on the radio, um, you may have heard this. So I came up with this table. In this table, it shows the number of confirmed um, COVID-19 deaths from March 17th to March 26th. And then it said what the daily increase was. I don't know that it was exactly right. 
and I f I change the daily increase by a percent to make the, the table uh, more accurate for what we're doing. This isn't a homework problem. I just wanted to show you how what we're doing right now in this section kind of relates to you know, what's happening in the world. So it says use the information provided in the table to create an exponential function to model the data. So I'm going to create an exponential growth function because the number of people dying from COVID-19 is going up by approximately the same percentage daily and it's about 26 percent per day. Eventually this is going to go down to zero but but for a small bank of time I can use the exponential growth functions to make predictions. And so it says use the function to predict the number of COVID-19 deaths on March 24th. Hint this is seven days after March 17th. Well I already know um, that there were 698 deaths in the United States on March 24th. But what if I was sitting here on March 17th and I wanted to make a projection? Um, I could do a prediction real basically uh, easy if I use the exponential growth function where P sub zero is some starting amount and I'm using March 17th as my starting amount. On March 17th there were 108 people in the United States that died of the coronavirus. And we're saying that that number is growing up by 26% per day. So the R is going to be 26%. As a decimal, it's going to be 0.26. I'm going to drag the decimal that's implied after the 6 over to the left 2 and throw my 0 down. And my T is going to be the number of days. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 days after March 17th. If I shove these numbers into the formula, the number of people that are expected to die of the coronavirus seven days after March 17th, which is March 24th, is the starting number, 108 people, times E to the R, which is 0 0.26, times seven. It's not gonna come out to exactly that because this is even a rounding of, of the, a decimal. But if I do 108 shift in LN 0 0.26 times 7, it gives me 666. That's a little bit shy. Actually, it's 667. So the formula that I created would be a little bit shy, but it's a predictive formula and they're, they're, you don't expect to get exact numbers. Um, but this is a very simplistic way that we can come up with a, an, es an estimation um, with just the skills that we have in linear algebra, of, I mean of in intermediate algebra. Of course, to make our, uh, uh, the, there's more accurate ways to make these functions using more involved formulas, but this is, this is, this is a good base and it's, it's fairly accurate. Um, not on the test, I just wanted to show you how we might be able to relate what's going on now to the, um, what's, you know, to what we're learning. Um, the next few problems, 11 through 14, use almost exactly the same function. The function 11 through 14 that we're given is called the exponential decay function. Um, the problems that we previously did, the starting amount was increasing by the same percent each time unit. Here, the starting amount is going to be decreasing by the same percent amount by each time unit. If I look at problem number 11, the number of people infected with the flu is gradually decreasing. There are currently 100,000 people in the USA with the flu. This is kind of, I, I wrote this years ago, but um, this you know, kind of fits. Um, this is just a generic flu. Um, there are, so there are a number of people with the flu is going down as opposed to going up. There are currently 100,000 people with the flu in the United States. The P sub zero is going to be 100,000. And I'm not going to write down all the zeros. I'm just going to use the word the use 100 and think of the units in thousands. So there are currently 100,000 people in the USA with the flu. The number of people in the flu is decreasing as opposed to increasing by 2% per day. So my R, my growth rate is 2%, but it's going to be negative because the number is going down. And as a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.02 or 0 0.02. And then how many people will have the flu in 30 days? Lots of 30s on here. T is going to be 30. 
and now I'm going to use the exponential decay function. Same function, but to make the numbers go down, I put a negative in front of the r. That'll make the numbers get smaller as opposed to bigger. So I'm going to say p of 30, the number of people in this case with the flu after 30 days, is the 100,000 people that currently have the flu times e to the negative to make it go down, r 0 0.02 times 30. So I'm going to go 100, shift in ln, negative by my fraction, 0 0.02 times 30. And this says 54.88 thousand. I'm just going to round that up. I'm going to round the 4 here up to a 5 because the number after the decimal is 5 or bigger. And so I'm going to say about, the number I'm going to put is 55. I have to put the word thousand after it again. So about 55,000 people will have the flu after 30 days. It'd be nice if I wrote a whole sentence, about 55,000 people will have the flu after 30 days. Um, let me do um, number 12. The number of people that smoke in the USA is, is gradually decreasing. There are currently 20 million, million people that smoke in the USA. The number is decreasing by 3% per year. How many will smoke in 10 years? So for this one, the initial amount is the 20 million people that are currently smoking in the USA. The R is 3%. And the decimal version of this is 0 0.03, or 0 0.03. And the t is 10 years. So this, because the number is going down as opposed to up, I need a negative in the formula. I'll use the exponential decay formula. I'm going to say the number of people p smoking in the USA after 10 years is the current 20 million times e to the negative 0 0.03 times 10. So 20 shift ln negative 0 0.03 times 10. And I get 14.816. It's either going to be 14 million or it's going to round up to 15 million because the number after the decimal is an 8, which is 5 or bigger. I'm going to say about 15 million people in the United States will smoke. And I don't usually write sentence complete sentences so I'm just gonna say about 15 million people because that's the answer how many people will ants smoke in 10 years about 15 million people so 13 and 14 want me to use the same formula why don't you just take a minute, try to do 13, pause the video, and then I will show a solution for 13 so you could have it in your notes. If I was doing 13, my initial number of people, Belgium has 11 million people, and it is one of the countries where population is decreasing. The population is decreasing by 1% per year. What's the population in Belgium going Belgium to be after 10 years? So the population in Belgium after 10 years is the 11 million people that it currently has times e to the negative because it's going down 0 0.01 times 10. My calculator gives me 9.95 million people and it says round to the nearest integer. So this 9 is either going to stay a 9 or it's going to round up to a 10. Because of the number after the decimal is a 9, I'm going to round it up to a 10. So I'm going to say about 10 million people will be in Belgium. I have 7 minutes. I'm not sure I can do the next problems in seven minutes, so I'm going to make a part three to this, and so I don't have to rush them. This is probably like a 10-minute chunk of problems.